What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Man, I know just as much as the next person that trying to find caps in Appalachia can be rough just starting out. Only getting a handful of caps from enemies here and there can leave you thinking that you'll never have enough to get your hands on those plans or legendaries you so desperately crave. If you follow every one of these methods, your money flow will be coming in at an exponential rate, leaving you rolling in more caps than you'll know what to do with. We'll go over some lucrative methods, ranging from just popping out of the vault to much more rewarding approaches once you've got some levels under your belt. There will be timestamps below if you want to jump around. If you know of a method that you think is as good or better, drop a comment below and let the community know. As always, if you find this helpful or entertaining, hit that like button and subscribe for more content. It helps the channel tremendously. Let's get started. Although the first couple methods are geared toward folks just starting out, I highly recommend just grinding it out to level 50 so you can access the bulk of the game. That's just where everything unlocks, where you can access basically everything and if you want to level up quick check out our level up guide in the link in the description below after watching this video of course all right so first things first get your vendor open up as soon as possible and use price checkers such as fed 76 to get a much better idea of what your loot is worth. Knowing what items sell for before just throwing them in your vendor at random prices will make it a much more pleasant, less stressful experience. One of the biggest mistakes that newcomers make is selling items at the price the game suggests. The value it tells you is 100% wrong at all times. When you go to sell a fixer and your vendor suggests it to be 1,057 caps, that's a big no-no. Most items sell for much more, especially legendaries. Go around and visit visit some other vendors to see what they are selling their items for. Getting into this rhythm and learning how to sell your goods with your vending machine will make your income grow so much faster. One of the most important things you'll need to get your hands on early on is the Hard Bargain Perk card. Located in Charisma, this card increases and decreases how many caps you can sell or buy your items for respectively. Charisma alone affects your prices as well. Each rank of the Hard Bargain Perk card acts like three Charisma, in total giving you nine when it's maxed. Maxed out. This card is a necessity. All right, now with the basics out of the way, let's get to some actual techniques and methods. Now, one of the very first things you can do at the lowest levels is to get your hand on the water purifier plan for your camp. You can grab this plan from the Charleston Capital DMV from the Overseer's Cache located right inside of the front door at any level. The DMV is located in the Ash Heat, which is directly south of 76 to the right of Poseidon, about southeast of Poseidon, or from the response Responders bot at White Springs Resort once you are around level 20. If you need the generator plan to power your water purifiers, head over to Poseidon Energy Plant, which is south of Vault 76 near the Rusty Pit. Complete the Powering Up Poseidon event that triggers when you get there for a chance to receive one of the handful of generator plans and you'll be set. Place down several purifiers at your camp to start producing your purified goodness. You can sell your waters for around five caps a pop, and that might not sound like much, but it adds up. And if you have 10 purifiers, going, you'll start making bank. There's one small thing to note, and that's your camp only produces one water at each tick, regardless of how many purifiers you've built. This means having more purifiers just creates space for your waters to spawn in. This allows you to go out and grind to come back to a bunch of full money-making machines. This method is great for low levels, but it isn't anywhere near as effective as the following methods. After you're feeling a little more froggy, this next method will easily become one of your daily grinds for your first couple hundred levels. It involves getting a lot of weapons and a lot of steak. Yum. If you see the uranium fever event pop up on your map, go to it immediately, especially if you're struggling bringing the money in. This will be one of the most lucrative events when it comes to cleaning out that robot vendor down the hill at White Spring Station. These mole miners in there drop all kinds of loot. Loot everything off their bodies. Leave nothing behind. If you aren't crawling toward the station filled to the brim with weapons, meat, and junk, you aren't taking advantage of this golden opportunity. They drop massive amounts of glowing meat, which can be cooked into steaks, which are worth around 11 caps apiece. What's left of the vendor's caps after you sell them all your delicious steaks? You can sell mole miner gauntlets to get the rest of the 1400 caps that he has. If you get a shot on all the mole miners that spawn in the event, you'll have plenty of guns left over that you can scrap down into steel. And if if you have the scrapper card on an intelligence, you'll end up with more 
junk than you can handle. Uranium Fever is one of the best events when it comes down to making caps quickly and getting a ton of junk while you do it. All right, so while we're on the topic of events, it's worth mentioning a couple others real quick. One being Colossal Problem. Don't be scared to jump to these nuke events every chance you get. The Wendigos from the Colossal Problem event drop screws, purified water, fiberglass spools, stem packs, ammo, and all kinds of goodies to sell. Fiberglass spools are one of the few types of junk that you can sell to the vendor and you'll be getting a lot of it. And the screws, oh my gosh. Those are probably one of the best items in the game to sell to other players. They can go for around five to eight caps a piece and people tear them up. Screws are pretty scarce otherwise, so you'll be supplying them to those that are reluctant to run the event, which happens to be more than you think. And just like the other events I mentioned, Scorched Earth is great for getting basically every type of junk and loot in the game. While the queen is on the ground, she spawns a horde of random mobs that swarm the area. Between all the weapons that the Scorched drop and all the junk and meat that the rest of the mobs drop, you can wobble your way over to Watoga Station after the event and max out your caps there. All right, so we've covered getting weapons, junk, and aid from these events, but it gets even better. Every time you complete an in-game event that's triggered by a nuke, whether it's Colossal Problem or Scorched Earth, you'll receive a few flux. Although this stuff is great for crafting camp items and making ammo, that's not exactly what we'll be using it for. One of the most profitable routes in this game for making caps fast is crafting mutation serums. They sell for up to 500 a piece to the robot vendors and around 300 to 500 to other players when you throw them in your own vending machine. The plans to make these aren't cheap though. You'll need to become a general by completing the Enclave quest line. This will automatically start by completing the Brotherhood of Steel quest line via the Uncle Sam quest, or you can trigger the quest Bunker Buster by exploring the abandoned waste dump in the mire. Once you become general, you'll access the Enclave vendor, allowing you to get the serum plans. They're a bit pricey at around 17,000 caps, but they are definitely worth the investment. When it comes down to it though, getting only 1,400 caps a day from the robot vendor, no matter how you do it, just doesn't cut it when you want some quick revenue. So as I mentioned earlier, the absolute best way to get caps is to learn how much items are worth to other players using your camp's vending machine. Any three-star legendary you come across, look up on a site like Fed76 and throw them in your vendor. If they aren't worth anything, you can sell them for five 500 to 1,000 to other players for scripts or script them yourself and take a shot at rolling something better at the purveyor. Go hit up Colossal Problem every chance you get, keeping your vendor stocked with screws. Each time you complete the nuke events, you get a guaranteed three-star legendary that could be worth 1,000 to 20,000 or more. Once you're able to launch your own nukes after completing the Enclave quest line, you'll start getting more legendaries and caps than you can handle. If you want to learn how to launch a nuke in less than five minutes, check out the card at the top right of the screen. Real quick, looking at the vendor, Bloody P Pieces are always good things to sell, especially if they have 25% faster fire rate. They could, always, they could sell from anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000, at least a few thousand each. Fixer and handmaids are gold mines. Really, any fixer or handmaid that has faster fire rate, people will buy for at least a couple thousand. People also love their quads and two shots. They tear them up. One of the best things you can do is get the fixer plan from the encrypted event and just start rolling them yourself. You will roll a nice fixer that you can turn around and sell for a decent amount of money. For armor, people love unyielding armor, especially with AP refresh or the Sentinel, which is 75% chance to reduce weight while standing still or while sprinting. People tear them up. Unyielding and Vanguard will be your most selling pieces probably. And then any piece of combat armor, just go around and look around and see what everything, see what people are selling them for. Keep your vendor stocked with serums and it'll be a constant flow of income. Nuclear key cards sell pretty good, although not so much. Sometimes nice to keep in there though. Also also getting your plans, the daily op plans and the generator plans, lights, everything, they sell pretty good. Run daily ops as much as you can and sell those plans after you learn them. Also, as much as serums are nice to make and put in your vendor, since they're so expensive, if you need to make some income first, you can just make ultrasite ammo because I believe you can make ultrasite from the start. As long as you have plenty of steel and lead, you can stock up on some ultrasite ammo. Ultrasite ammo flies out of your vendor, ridiculous speeds. Everyone's buying it. As soon as you put it up, it'll be gone within a day or two. You want to keep 45s, 556, five, and five millimeter in your vendor. And sometimes 50 
50 caliber and not to forget but camp items in general people love anything you can get like i mentioned from daily ops the uh seasonal events like from fashion not or meat week people will always buy those after the fact so it's good to save them for later did i mention screws you gotta keep screws in there i'm telling you that is probably one of my biggest money makers by far is keeping screws in your vendor and keeping them in there they will go fast they will fly out at five a piece easily sometimes you even put them in there for up to eight at the robot vendor they sell a pack of 10 for 20 of them so that's 10 a piece selling it a little bit less people are gonna always come to you before hitting the store but yeah guys that about sums it up i hope i got everything if i forgot anything please drop a comment below and let the community know we gotta help each other get started because we all started somewhere and people helped us so what we know we can spread our knowledge to others if you guys found this helpful or entertaining hit that like button as always and subscribe if you don't want to miss a thing catch me live on stream mondays wednesdays and fridays at 6 30 p.m on youtube i would love to see y'all and most importantly tell someone you love them today and i'll catch y'all later see y'all peace oh, yeah.